Welcome to Rock Talk with Jackie Neal. On this episode, we are talking with the one and only Dee Snyder of Twisted Sister. He has a new book out called Frats. We'll also get information on an upcoming film, the writer's strike, possibly an actor strike, and so much more. Here he is, Mr. Dee Snyder. Jackie! Hey, Dee, thank you so much. Hey, listen, of course, I know we don't have much time, so I'm going to jump in. We're talking about frats, examining the pressures of toxic masculinity in high school hallways. On sale at dsnyderbook.com and wherever you buy your books. Now, Dee, when we spoke last year, we talked about an upcoming film project, not a follow-up, but in addition to 1998 Strangeland. Please tell me the film is about this novel. I love this book so much. Thank you for that. Uh, actually, the film, it, that's My Enemy's Enemy, uh, which I'm waiting to start. I'm going to be directing it. I wrote, uh, but that's been delayed due to the strikes going on. Yeah. And now you see, I don't know if you know, I'm, I'm in a Screen Actors Guild. Apparently, we're negotiating now as well, and the actors may be going on strike. So that's delayed. No, the book itself is based in the well, it based in the world of of high school fraternities. Yeah. And people go, "What's a high school fraternity?" Well, there were gangs with with. Greek letters and shorters. Yeah. That's all they were. And I was surprised. I grew up in that environment, and I was surprised when I started traveling the world and talking to people about this very hostile world that I grew up in, suburbia. You think, oh, suburbia, it's so nice. No, uh-huh. it wasn't so nice. I, you know, I found out that people were going, what's a high school fraternity, and why were they allowed to just roam free? And uh, so I said, as I told them the story, I realized it was interesting to people. So this book, as you know, is based on actual events, but I put a fictionalized character into the scene, and it tells a fictional story based on actual events. When I was in high school, we didn't have fraternities, but we had hazing. And they took us freshman girls downtown, and they poured all kinds of gross stuff on us. And then they started egging us, and they were going to parade us around the downtown square after that. Well, they didn't because when they started egging us, they threw an egg. One came at me. I ducked, and it hit my friend Teresa behind me and cut her cornea, and they cut all of that out immediately, and that should have been done a long time ago. The story, it's horrific. Of course, based on true events, happened in this book. It's, it was insanely brutal. Eventually, they outlawed the fraternities, but it was took a while. They existed from like the 60s into the early 80s, and when someone nearly died in one of these gang fights, and this is, I don't want to give anything away, but it's, that story is, is portrayed in the book. They outlawed fraternities and they no longer exist. But it took a very long time because they existed under uh, a a certain uh, auspice of legitimacy. They were chartered with the police station. You couldn't, with the police department, you couldn't have a fraternity unless it was an official charter. So somehow it made it seem like it was, oh, it can't be a bad thing. The police know about it, you know? Um, And it was that the hazing got worse and worse and worse uh, and, and more and more brutal. And you know, people are going to read this and they're going to go, that's impossible. Right. That, that couldn't have happened. But it did. It's amazing how, pe- how the brutality that, uh, that people will exert on each other and, and no one wants to seem to put a stop to it. Like you would think the next group that came in say, you know what, I'm not going to do it to this you know, next group because I didn't like it when it happened to me. And yet there they are with the paddles. Yeah. There they are with the eggs throwing away to hurting people because, hey, it happened to me, now it's your turn. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's weird. And, you know, and it's funny, that toxic masculinity, I didn't even realize it was, I was just telling this story, and my publisher said, we love this book, it's about toxic masculinity. I said, it is? <laughs> and yeah. I said, oh yeah, I guess that's it. Growing up in an environment, I was one of the nerds trying to, big weird dude trying not to get my <laughs> ass kicked, but it may, I grew up very tough and hard because of it, because of the toxicity, you know? So, uh, and I guess what? You like to think we're, we've, we've, we're beyond that? It's still going on. Of course. It's still going on. Well, and like you, and again, not to give anything away, but, you know, in the book, the deans, the authority at the schools, the police, even the parents, especially the fathers, saw it as, oh, they're just kids and a badge of honor. I to say something. Thank you. You really read the book. I did. <laughs> so many times people say, read the book, and I can tell they're just reading the, the page, because I, you know, the, the front page, so thank you. Yeah, yeah. Again, make it. The parents making excuses yeah. for the, yeah, for for their for their sons. Oh yeah, yeah, they're hazing. Uh, I went through that when I was in college, you know, and not 
recognizing the damage and the danger their children are in. Uh, you know, college people, the question about their ability and their maturity levels, but high school, you're even less ready to handle some oh, of the God. things that you're dealing with. And the, and the rampant drugs and alcohol that was going, drinking and, and drug taking, that's another thing. Some people are incapable of handling that, and my main character, it just takes them further and further down that, yeah. that, that rabbit hole. Well, and again, not to give anything away, um, because I really loved the book. It was one of those, I loved your character development and the storyline. I didn't put it down until I was finished. But, you know, something that is chilling to me and that a lot of people have not realized historically in this culture is that sometimes it enables and nurtures sociopathic behavior. 100%. You know, as I said, the people, few people uh, who, you know, after they've been hazed and they've gone through the rituals, few people move on to the next level and don't give the same treatment to the people who step behind them. You know, it, it, for many of the people, it's almost like it's, it's payback. Yeah. They got beaten, and now they're going to beat these next people. And, you know, a handful will say, you know what, I'm not doing that. I didn't like it, and I'm not doing it to me. That's the kind of guy I am. But too many people will just take that with them and carry it, that this is the way of the world. This is life. Deal with it. Suffer through it. You know, and, and, and that, unfortunately, is a sad reality. As I said, we still deal with those kind of ritualistic things. And even in lesser levels as we move on in life and people get older in the workplace and stuff, no, they're not swinging paddles, but there's, there's still this, like, you've got to pay your dues yeah. kind of mentality. Just that bully mentality and this under the same canopy of abusers becoming abusers. 100%. We like to think that it, we were better than that and we've grown from that, but it is a sad reality of the world. You know, and uh, and it's just like, you know, it's something we need to be aware of. And, you know, the book is a cautionary tale as well. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame that we have to be cautioned. But um, Bobby Kovacs, uh, you know, my, my, my main character, he, uh, is, he, he transfers from a, in his senior year from Ohio, middle America. He grows up as an Air Force brat on, a, on an Air Force base. And he comes to this town not knowing the lay of the land, walks in and not understanding the intricacy of this fraternity system and the hostility of it as yeah. well, and just trying to protect his friend winds up crossing the wrong person. Even his friend who he saves says, Mike, what did you do? Yeah. What did you do? Yeah. Because he knows what the landmine that Bobby has stepped on. And, uh, and, and, and in fact, that starts the whole story, his whole world spinning out of control. When I mentioned that I love the character development, and again, you've got to get the book and read it. My favorite character, Bobby, of course, Little Brett. Oh my God, I loved Little Brett. He was just my favorite. Brett is that kid, you know, that, that kid who, I mean, it, it, I'm, again, we could give away so much of the story. There's one part of the story where he leads, they're being chased by this fraternity, and Brett knows how to avoid them by running through people's backyards. But he does it because he's done it so many times. And they practice. He's like a professional <laughs> yes. at avoiding getting beat up. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's a sad, like, it's, it, you, it's like, that's really sad that you've been chased so many times, you know how to get away. Yeah. You know, but it, it's, it's a reality. But what I like about Bobby uh, and, and is that even though he came from a school where he, he grew up on an Air Force base and he was popular and he was a jock, whatever, his first friend he makes is this dweeby, you know, this geek. And they bond over comic books and heavy metal rock and roll. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and, and, he, and he sort of doesn't see that he's this little nobody. Uh, he just sees this 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 guy who's a nice guy and becomes friends with him and again trying to protect his friend he winds up stepping on a landmine so to speak metaphorically and and changes his life forever his and Brett's and I thought it was so classy in the book um, one of the heavy metal bands you could have mentioned you didn't <laughs> <laughs> well I, I'll tell you so I'm not in the book but I am in a, a passing reference so at the prom 
the band playing is Dusk, D-U-S-K. And, uh, and Bobby says, uh, the singer went on to be pretty, become pretty famous. <laughs> so I was in Dusk. And uh, we used to play all the dances in 1972 and 73. We were that band in high school. And so I was that singer who went on to become pretty famous. So that's the only sort of wink at uh, Dee Snyder. And the romance is in Bobby's romance with Angel is kind of based on my relationship with my wife, Suzette. Uh, she was, comes from a, maf- a mafia family who threatened to kill me on the first date. <laughs> and uh, put a lot of our, of our relationship in there as well. Well, and I know you need to go. That is one of the things, being a female, I love most about you is how you love and honor Suzette always. Dee, thank you so much. I could just keep talking to you. You know, I know you've said that y'all are going to be at some political rallies maybe in 2024. Did you really say that? Is that really going to happen? Well, it was nothing planned. It's just I was saying I could see us getting together okay. for uh, a charity event or a political okay. rally, and all of a sudden everybody went, Twisted Sisters reuniting! <laughs> so, but I got a feeling I got a feeling there's going to be some causes that need to be singing. We're not going to take it. Rock so on, I man. won't be surprised. D, thank you so much again. Frats, examining the pressures of toxic masculinity in high school hallways, on sale at dsnyderbook.com and wherever you get your books. Thank you so much, D. Snyder. Thanks, Jackie. Talk to you again. Okay. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Rock Talk with Jackie Neal. Feel free to like, subscribe, share, and leave me a review. Thanks to Deepwell Sound's Mike Neal for providing the original Kathy's Beach Ball, the intro and outro music for Rock Talk with Jackie Neal.